Hi there and welcome. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kevin and here we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks and tutorials. We are going to be taking a look at the difference between two properties that seem to be doing the exact same thing, box shadow and the filter drop shadow. Super similar, we're almost the same, but there's a really big difference between the two of them. And there's also a gotcha in there. There's this one thing with drop shadow that makes it not work. So we're gonna look at the difference between them and then right at the end, we'll see what that gotcha is that can stop drop shadows from working and it caught me off guard and I don't want it to catch you off guard. All right, so let's jump into the code here and we will be doing this in CodePen. I know usually I am in VS Code, but this is a nice simple one. We can share it really easily when it's here in CodePen. So I'm gonna do it here. Um, and what I've done is I've, to begin with, we have our content here, which is the white box. And inside that white box, we have two stars that are exactly the same. These are using the same image, our star.svg here. Uh, the only difference between these two is one of them I gave the class of box shadow, whereas the other one has this filter shadow on there. So I'm gonna start with the box shadow class, and box shadow. And on the box shadow, let's give it well, a box shadow. So box shadow of, uh, we'll do 0.75M, 0.75M, 1M of blur. And of course you can do this in pixels too. And we'll give this an RGBA of let's say, or we'll leave it black actually, just cause it's gonna make it stand out a little bit more. I think it'd be a little bit easier. So I won't actually give it a color. Uh, one thing that is interesting is with shadows, this is a little side thing, color red, the shadow takes the color, it has like the current color as a default. So whatever your text color is, by default, that is your shadow color. So eh, nice little extra piece of information there that could be probably never useful, but you never know. <laughs> um, so we have my shadow that's on there really strong, but it looks like crap. Nobody wants that. You have this nice star. You want to be, it's an SVG. It has a transparent background. Why is this happening? It's a little bit frustrating. Um, and we're gonna see another case where this can be frustrating as well. There's another workaround for that one, but I wanna look at this one for now. Um, so then we have our other star here, which is my filter shadow. So on that one, let's do it, filter shadow. And on there, we can give that one, instead of giving it the box shadow, I'm gonna write filter. Now there's a whole bunch of filters. I'm gonna put a link down below to uh, the MDM article that looks at all of them. I'll probably do a video that looks at all of them other than maybe box shadow or I'll probably, or not box shadow, but just shadow, or I might mention it in there. Um, but this one, I really just wanna look at the difference between these two, cause it's kind of weird that we can make shadows in two different ways. Like that's that's strange, right? It's you know, CSS, but whatever. But what we wanna do here on my filter is a drop shadow instead of a box shadow. Um, so this is a function, so it's drop shadow and then open and close these parentheses here. And we'll take the exact same thing we did. So might as well just copy and paste that right in there. And we're gonna get a shadow, but you're gonna see this time, once that updates, there we go, it's on the star itself. It's looking at the contents, it's not looking at that. And actually, let's take the blur off, just to show you it really is following the shape of my SVG there. You can see it's perfect in line with my SVG, and that's really cool, that's really awesome, I find. Maybe we'll, we'll lower this blur down a little bit so it keeps more of the star shape. And uh, there you go, you can see that coming in. So that is where the drop shadow could be really, really useful instead of using a box shadow. Um, if ever you need an icon or something. Now, I wouldn't make it this strong necessarily, but it could still definitely be useful. Now, there are some other use cases for this and sometimes where I'm guaranteeing people run into trouble. So we're gonna look at one of those here where I have, oh, well, that's weird, the color shifted there. <laughs> it's, I exported them all from, um, InDesign, uh, InDesign Illustrator, and the middle one here is a PNG, so I must have done something because the colors change, but that's okay. Um, so we have my JPEG is the first one, the second one is a PNG, and the third one here is my star. Now all of them have the shadow on it, and they're all using the same drop shadow, because you can see it's filter shadow on all of them, but this one looks exactly like this one here. And that's one of those things where it's kind of annoying, but uh, it's a JPEG. JPEGs do not support transparency. So even though I had a transparent image and I exported it, um, it's gonna fill that with white and it's gonna be a regular image, just like this one. So just do watch out if you want transparency, either PNG or uh, SVG, or I guess a GIF, depending on what you're doing. Uh, GIF, GIF, I'm not gonna get no argument on that. Um, another place where you could use it, now I wouldn't necessarily do it in this case because there's uh, we have other use cases for it as well, but we could do it on text as well. Um, so you can see I did a box shadow on one of them and I did a filter shadow on the other one. Now the color of my shadows is off and actually let's, let's just make this like 20 pixels so it's a little smaller. Um, 
And we're going to get to the gotcha in a second. We're not at the gotcha yet. Probably five pixels. That 20 was still pretty big. There we go. And even these are kind of big. Okay, let's just do uh, 20 pixels, 20 pixels, and leave it like that. Um, so you can see it's working here, but it's not working there. This is the same image that we, or the, not the same image, the same problem we ran, up, ran into up here. So this one is using the filter shadow, and the second one here is using my box shadow. So on that case, we are left with this box that's floating around there. I find this really weird in a way because this box can be transparent. Like on my text itself, there's no background color on my text, but this is the type of thing you get where you see the box and it's a little bit annoying. The name sort of implies that it's a shadow on the box and not on the content of the box. So that does make a little bit of sense that it's doing that. Now, why would I maybe not do that is just because um, on text itself, you can of course do a text and we have the text shadow. So in this case, I guess this is like the first use case. I don't know the history on which one came first. And let's just do 20 pixels, 20 pixels, five pixels blue. So it's a different color. Um, and then you can see that we get the same type of effect there. And you can do some fun things with text shadows as well. But a text shadow might be, uh, you know, if we add blue here and we add in text and then what was that um, filter shadow? I don't even know what's gonna happen here. We have the two shadows overlapping each other. Um, interesting, their positioning, their positioning looks a little bit different, but um, if it was just on text, I'd probably use this just because this is a bit longer and less well-known. So for maintainability, maybe not as popular, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're getting a little messy. And um, so we'll <laughs> turn that off, it's getting disastrous. There we go, we're back to normal a little bit. Uh, now there is a gotcha with all of this. And what the gotcha is, um, if you look up the this drop shadow it tells you that it actually does support an offset so um or a spread offset or spread whatever you want to call it so on a regular box shadow you have the horizontal offset the vertical offset and then here this one is your blur and then it does accept another value which would be your spread so i could do this as 1m and then sending it much bigger yeah so you can see here 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 they've, they've sort of expanded out a lot and this is so it's let's just say it's going you know 20 pixels just so it's a bit easier to look at it's going 20 pixels and then it's starting the blur um so even if actually this might be a lot more obvious if i just put this at zero and zero um so we have no offset no anything if i take this and it's optional the same way a blur is actually optional for both of these um, so you can see it's blurring right away. When I add that 20 pixels here, what it's doing is it's adding an extra 20 pixels before it starts that blur. So that's the spread um, that's coming in, and this can also be a negative value. Now, as part of the spec of drop shadow, it should have a spread, but it doesn't accept it. The value, or most browsers apparently don't support it. And the problem is if you put it in a browser where it's not supported, it just doesn't work. So if I came here and I add in this value, and this is in Firefox uh, nightly, so they're usually pretty good with all of this stuff. And you can see it just kills it everywhere um, because it doesn't accept that. Don't know why, I honestly, I have no idea why that doesn't work, but you cannot put a spread on your drop shadow. So I don't want you to get stuck on that along the way because I got stuck on that when I was setting up this demo. Um, and it was a little bit frustrating because I couldn't figure out what was going on. But there you have it, the difference between box shadow and the filter drop shadow and when and why you might want to use one or the other. Nice, just quick tutorial for this one. And if you are new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, but you learned a little something, please do consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, if you do not know, I do have a Discord as well. So if you want to hang out with me and a whole bunch of other really talented and smart people, come over to the Discord. The link for that is down in the comments below. If you'd like to support my channel, you can become a patron. And thank you very much to all my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. So you can check out my patron. Once again, link is down below. Uh, you could also buy a t-shirt or you could buy a course. I have my current course on Scrimba. That is a 15 hour deep dive into web development. And if you buy that, it will help me out and hopefully help you out as well. That's the whole point of it. Thank you very much for watching. You guys are amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.